Welcome back to the Tool Crew. Today we are looking at the Leatherman Super Tool 300. Now the Super Tool 300 is going to be a large frame multi-tool with a very good set of tools located within it. It's going to compete more directly with your Leatherman Surge, your Victorinox Swiss Tools, your Gerber Center Drive Plus, a couple of the song models like the Power Lock and the Power Assist. But it's going to come at a cheaper price with everything except with the exception of the the SOG models because of their Chinese manufacturing. They're a little bit cheaper. I also feel that they're a little bit cheaper in quality. They do have a couple things they do pretty well, but overall the quality is not quite there in the SOG models as compared to a Victorinox especially or a Leatherman Surge or Super Tool 300 or even the new Gerber Center Drive Plus which I feel is making big strides in bringing Gerber back uh, to relevancy within the multi-tool world because their products are, are starting to get better and I hope they continue to improve along that. At any rate, the Super Tool 300 is it lists today at about $90, but you can regularly find this tool somewhere between $75 and $80, which makes it very attractive when you're comparing it to those other models. So we're going to get into the specs real quick, and then we'll talk about these tools that are within it, and then I'll give you my thoughts on what I think of the Super Tool 300, and maybe a way or two that they can improve it to make it even more attractive. Let's get into it. First and foremost, the Super Tool, as we mentioned before, is a large frame multi-tool. So it's going to have a four and a half inch overall frame size, or about 114 millimeters. Now, one of the things I like about the Super Tool is how compact it is, considering it's such a robust multi-tool. And its width here is going to measure in at an inch and a half, or about 38 millimeters. Its overall height or depth here, thickness is about three quarters of an inch, or about 19 millimeters which make it a very compact tool when comparing it to the other uh, heavy duty multi-tools with the exception of Victorinox because the Victorinox tools are really really well engineered and very very compact. The weight on the Super Tool is 10.08 ounces or about 285 grams. Let's open it up get into the tools and we'll talk about what this multi-tool has to offer. First thing we want to mention is that all of the interior tools are locking. So everything locks in place. Now much like the rebar when we did the review on it, you do not have to open the Super Tool 300 up completely all the way in order to get your four outside accessible tools. Well, you do for the knife and saw because you really can't dig in there without opening it up. So uh, let me step back here a second. It's going to be the knife blades that will be able to access because they have nail nicks that will be able to go past the handle or past the plier heads and not contact the handle whenever you're opening it up. Now the blades on here are going to be 420 high carbon, no upgraded steels in the Super Tool 300. Now Leatherman lists the blade length longer because they're measuring from the point to the center point of the pivot. I don't like that they do that. The actual cutting edge blade length on the Super Tool 300 is 2 and 15 sixteenths of an inch, just, just a touch under 3 inches or 74 millimeters. And that's going to be true of both the main blade and the serrated blade. Now the serrated blade, or excuse me, the main blade here is has a very thin profile and the reason for that is obviously because it has to sit in there flush when it's in the closed position so you're not going to have quite as robust of a knife as you're going to have on a Leatherman Surge but it is a very high quality knife Now, one of the downfalls to it obviously is because it opens from the inside if you're trying to cut something uh, against a table or against cutting board or something you really have to open it up in order to get down there and it's still not quite it's not that convenient to do it is a very good knife, but the orientation is can be somewhat limiting in a way. On the opposite side, we have the serrated blade, and much like the the main blade, it's going to be a thinner profile, be the same length, two and fifteen sixteenths of an inch, or seventy four millimeters. Next tool over is going to be our oh there we go is going to be our three combination tool that I really like within Leatherman but I will say that I don't like it quite as much in the Super Tool and I'm going to show you why. So this is the uh, three combination can opener which can opener is extremely good bottle cap lifter and then the wire stripper. Now the wire stripping functionality on the Super Tool is what I desire or, or what I like less 
than some of the other multi-tools within Leatherman. I do like this particular tool. I like it a lot, actually. And the wire stripping functionality works really great on the other multi-tools. On this multi-tool, however, it doesn't work quite as good. So how I do my wire stripping, if you've watched my videos, I release the tool, trap the wire between the frame and the cutters. I'm able to apply pressure and then rotate the tool around the wire to cut the insulation and then I can strip it off. But if you will look on the SuperTool 300, you see it leaves a pretty large gap. So you're not able to get down on wire quite as much as a Leatherman Surge, for instance. And a lot of that is due to how the frame on the Surge is curved to more closely match that uh, that profile of the of the cutters. Now the wave is even better. The wave will get down and give you the ability to strip about 22 gauge in the fashion which I do it. And then the rebar is pretty good as well. Not quite as good as the wave when it comes to wire stripping functionality because of the frame design of the rebar. But now we look back at the super tool and you'll notice that it's really offset and it's the gap in there is pretty large so you're not going to be able to get down on very small wire the smallest that I'm really able to do well on the super tool 300 is about 12 gauge where on the surge I can get down to about 14 gauge and I can cut that really well and I can actually cut down on 16 gauge uh, at its minimum so I while I like that particular tool I don't care for it as much in the frame design of the Super Tool 300. Now the next tool over is one I actually do like in the Super Tool 300. I'm usually a big fan of the of the uh, bit exchanger that Leatherman offers, but in this suit in this multi tool, I actually like this large, long reach 3D Phillips driver. So it's a it's a number two Phillips, and then you could also add on the bit kit that. Uh, a separate bit kit where you could take the adapter which is squared off fits directly over that and then you have the ability to add on more bits so it's good functionality for the super tool the reason that I like this is because unlike the rebar which has a decent screwdriver for a 3d screwdriver this one is actually a really long reach two inch overall where you can get a lot of reach out of this particular driver and I think it works well in this tool. Most times I would rather see a bit exchanger, but in this in the case of the super tool, I'm actually okay with this 3D driver because I do have the ability to expand it in order to expand my driver capability. But I think that that is a very good tool in this particular multi-tool, more so because of its reach. Then the next tool over is going to be our small driver our small uh, flat driver and then the next tool over is where when you compare it to the surge it's going to have a little bit of an advantage because this is the saw now the saw length is two and three quarters of an inch or about 71 millimeters I'm going to bring the surge saw in here so here's a big advantage that the super tool has over the surge saw and you'll notice it's about five sixteenths of, of an inch in difference there so it's pretty substantial now what the surge offers is that with the blade exchanger or that t-shank exchanger now you can expand the capabilities and you can add on an aftermarket saw which this is short enough to carry in the pouch with you it's not one of those you know eight inch saws so you can actually carry this very comfortably with the surge in its pouch and now you have the ability to have a bit longer saw length than you're going to find even on the Super Tool 300. But this is a very, very good saw. The next tool that we're going to look at, if we get flipped around here to the other side, actually we'll spread a few of them out here. So we have our medium flat driver, and then we have our large flat driver. Now, the tool list on the Super Tool 300 is listed at 19, but they don't list this as two tools. This is actually your large flat driver, and it also works as a light duty pry bar. So I actually count it as 20. Then you have your awl with sewing eye, uh, with sewing eyelet, and the awl on here is going to be the same one that you're going to find on the Surge. And I really, really like the capabilities of that awl. It works extremely well. The next item over is going to be our lanyard loop. So if you want to carry your multi-tool with a lanyard then you have the ability to do so. 
And then the last tool is going to be our file. Now the file has a bit of an advantage over the surge as well. So if we pull the surge in here and we get its file out, you'll notice that it has a length advantage over the surge. So the saw length on the super tool is actually two and seven eighths of an inch or about 73 millimeters. Now, unlike the surge, it does not come with a diamond file. You do have a decently aggressive crosscut combination file, and then you have your single cut on the other side, and then you have your edge file. This one actually is a pretty good file. It's not as it's not quite as aggressively cut as you're going to find on Victorinox or even the rebar. I thought uh, initially that these were pretty close in in uh, with their cut pattern and when you're comparing it to the rebar but actually the rebar is more aggressive it has a more aggressive cut pattern than even, even the super tool 300 is it a bad saw no is it the best saw or excuse me file no i don't think so either is it good yeah i believe it's good it it does a job and does it well but i also do prefer the ability to have the diamond file on a surge i because i use it a lot now the one tool that the super tool is not going to have and that is going to be the scissors you know when it comes to these multi-tools these large multi-tools you have these four outside accessible tools that you really want to have or a lot of people want to have on their multi-tool i personally use all of these i use the serrated blade i use the standard blade i use the saw and i use the file so from my perspective, I want those on there. Now, you can have scissors that are on the interior of the tool, like they do in the Wave and the Charge series, but you sacrifice size and quality, not necessarily quality, because they're, they're pretty sharp scissors too. They're not as robust as what you're gonna find on a Surge though, or for that matter, a new free P4. But, when it comes to these larger, or, or these multi-tools, where you have the four main tools that I personally want all of those on there and then the fifth is left out and that's going to be the scissors I actually don't mind it in this because of the ability to add on scissors through a Victorinox knife or through a keychain multi-tool that you can get very good scissors in so if there's one tool of the main five that I want missing from my perspective personally I would rather see the scissors missing because I can always add it on and then Having the scissors separate of your multi-tool in most cases, unless it's an outside accessible like on the Leatherman Surge, it's actually more convenient to use it in a keychain or in a knife as opposed to having to open up the scissors, fold them out, and then be able to use them. So while it does lack scissors, I prefer that the scissors are missing in this particular tool. Now if we close these up and we'll get the uh, multi-tool opened up here again we have the exact same set of pliers that we're going to find in the Leatherman Surge. So we're going to have needle nose, regular pliers, 154 CM replaceable cutters and hard wire cutters which work extremely well. And then on the in the back we have the first slot there is going to be for your stranded wire cutting and the second one is going to be for the wire crimper. It's exactly the same pliers that you're going to find on the Surge. What you sacrifice because of this design though is it's not going to be as comfortable when using the pliers. Now it does have some hot spots. They're not as prevalent as what we had on some of the early versions of Leatherman where they had this style because what they do now is they have a bit of a, a bend over. So the Super Tool, this is in its third generation now and every generation has got a little bit more refined uh, through the years so I prefer the surge over this because I like the outside accessible uh, blades and uh, well actually all the five outside accessible tools and I find that the surge just fits me better this is a very good multi-tool though and it comes with a very robust set of tools the trade-off obviously is that you don't have the same convenience but it's also quite a bit cheaper so you can actually find this multi-tool, I found it today, for $74. So you can actually get this for about $35 less than you can a Super Tool, or excuse me, than you can a Leatherman Surge. So if price is a bigger factor, or maybe you just like the traditional style, then maybe the Super Tool is the right tool for you. 
Well, I'm going to talk a little bit about what I would do to improve the surge just like, or excuse me, the super tool. I keep misspeaking today. I apologize. The What I can do to improve the super tool 300 just a little bit to make it maybe a little bit better of a multi-tool. When thinking about how to improve the super tool 300 i really limited that to the tool set and not the design because i feel that either you gravitate towards this traditional design or you don't it's just as simple as that now first thing is i don't think this tool needs a pocket clip it's too big to be used with a pocket clip in my opinion so that's not something that i would add to this tool i also think this tool is fine without scissors because like we mentioned you can add scissors in multiple different ways this is not necessarily a tool that needs scissors, in my opinion. On the whole, I really like the tool set, but there is one tool that I think is missing that I would like to see added to this tool. Now, I really like this driver uh, and the ability to expand on it, where you can add on that adapter and those extra bits to give you a little bit more capability. I like the large driver for its dual functionality as a pry tool. I like the small driver for its dual functionality as a punch down tool on the back of electrical outlets and, and switches to either install or remove electrical wire. The one tool I'd be willing to sacrifice would be the medium driver. And the one tool I'd want in, in its place would be a dedicated chisel like we're gonna find here on the Swiss tool, uh, the Victorinox Swiss tool. I love the fact that Victorinox puts chisels in their multi-tools. I think that's one tool that I would really like to see Leatherman implement into some of their multi-tools because I think that it would, you know, it really improve the functionality of the multi-tool on the whole because you can either use it as a dedicated chisel on woods and plastics or you can use it as a scraping tool which would come in extremely handy. Now the next tool is not a change but more of a tweak. And what I would like to see is an upgrade to the file. Now, while I don't necessarily think this tool needs a diamond file, even though I personally use the diamond file, I would like to see a more, aggress a, a more aggressive cut pattern on their files. This file is okay. It's not what I would consider great when comparing it to like the Swiss tool or for that matter, even the, the smaller version of this, the rebar. If they had a more aggressive file, it would definitely be an improvement on this multi-tool. Now thinking about the Super Tool 300 from a design perspective, I would love to see a version of the Super Tool 300 or a completely new multi-tool that incorporated the same quality of tools located within the Super Tool 300, but made them in an outside accessible version, much like the Victorinox Swiss tool, which is an outstanding multi-tool, it really is. Now Leatherman's tried to do something similar with the new Free Series, but the Free Series, while it's convenient to use and user-friendly, it lacks a certain quality to its tool set. It's just not there for me. It just does not meet the bar that I expect Leatherman to meet with their multi-tools. But a version of the Super Tool incorporating the same tool set or similar tool set that the current Super Tool 300 has would be an outstanding multi-tool. Then you would have all of your rounded edges on the inside. So when you're using the pliers, there would be no hot spots. All your blades, your knife, or excuse me, your blades, your saw, and your file would all be outside accessible. So when you open the blades, they'd be orientated in the correct direction. You wouldn't have the problem of the handle being in the way when you're trying to cut on something. If Leatherman introduced a multi-tool similar to that of the Super Tool 300, but in more closely in design to the Victorinox Swiss tool, I think that would be an outstanding multi-tool. If you guys have some thoughts on what you would do or what you think could be done to improve the Super Tool 300, please Put them in the comments below. I'd love to hear what you guys have to say. My name is Ben, and you've been watching my review of the Leatherman Super Tool 300. If you like this review, please give it a thumbs up, and I'll see you in the next one.